Austin here from Double the Tech, and I recently purchased a tablet off of Amazon for $58. So on May 3rd, 2013, I purchased this tablet off of Amazon. It's the uh, All Day Mall TM 7-inch capacitive touchscreen Android tablet. Basically, there is a bazillion and one variants of this exact same tablet that comes from halfway around the world. Uh, it is a all-winner A13 based 7-inch tablet. Going through all the other super cheap tablets uh, on Amazon, eBay, so forth, so on, they all had really bad reviews except for this one which at the price point has four and a half stars which really stuck out to me and that's why I ended up ordering this one. Inside the box you get the tablet itself, a hilariously written, awfully translated manual that has almost nothing of use to say and pictures that are impossible to read. $60 tablet, don't need a manual, it's stock Android, Google it. Comes with a micro USB to regular USB for flash drives and plugging in keyboards. charges significantly faster through its proprietary connector at 2 amps at 5 volts instead of the regular 500 milliamps on a regular micro USB. Here's a microphone, power button, volume, headphone jack, micro SD card slot is on the back here. I got a little 32 gigabyte micro SD card on eBay for $12. And then there's these two lovely quality control stickers on the back. As you can see, I started to try to peel this one off. Also on Amazon, there is this $14 case. It's actually pretty well done. The generic tablet has become so popular that uh, case manufacturers are actually making cases for it and it fits in just perfect. I have the tablet with its little USB adapter cord plugged in. I have a generic Logitech K120 keyboard. I can't type fast, but it works surprisingly. So a few things I did to make the tablet a little bit easier to use, a little bit smoother, a little bit faster. One, I used Nova Launcher on all my Android devices. The default launcher on this tablet had really big icons and it just looked cheap. Another app that I downloaded is the Naked Browser app. It is a watered down light browser for underpowered Android devices. All of the other browsers on this Android were incredibly slow and laggy, and it is still very slow inside of this browser. This tablet just underperforms for browsing, period. When I first had the tablet, I tried loading Google Chrome on here. The entire tablet just about died trying to run Chrome every single time. But once the page actually loads, it scrolls just fine, zooms in and out just fine, that's not an issue. Tapping, tapping. And this is common with this tablet. You tap and kind of have to wait two or three seconds for it to understand, hey, you've just pressed a button. So the tablet did come installed with Flash on it. This tablet is just simply too underpowered to even attempt to run Flash on any web page. I just completely uninstalled Flash. There's no issues with removing Flash from any Android device nowadays. They run better without it. One thing I made sure that I did is I went into the settings of this tablet and went ahead to the list of apps and I went ahead and disabled few apps that the tablet came with. Uh, the, the internal browser I've disabled because I have a different browser and I don't want this browser background loading. The internal calendar I disabled. Google has a newer calendar that I use. And regular email I've disabled because I use Gmail. This is the big one. Keyboards are another big issue with this tablet. It came with stock Android 4.0 keyboard and a Chinese keyboard. I made sure to go ahead and disable the Chinese keyboard app by going to all apps and settings. But anyway, what I did is I went in here, tapped on it, and went ahead and clicked disable. I've already disabled it. And then I went in, I went to the uh, Play Store, downloaded Android Jelly Bean keyboard, set that as my default keyboard. Once I got the Jelly Bean keyboard installed on the tablet, I went ahead and turned off the swipe input which is called gesture input. This tablet is too underpowered to run the gesture-based typing. Since this tablet has an all-winner A13 processor in it, it comes at a stock 1 gigahertz. I downloaded the Antutu CPU Master free off Play Store and overclocked this tablet to 1.2 gigahertz. And a 200 megahertz boost doesn't really sound like much, but you might as well eke out every little bit of performance that you can get. With the all-winner A13 processor, you can't go above 1.2 gigahertz without it becoming incredibly unstable. But by getting rid of the stock browser, overclocking the CPU a little bit, putting in a better keyboard, disabling the Chinese keyboard, and getting rid of Flash, and installing Nova Launcher, this tablet is much more usable now. It's still very slow. Typically, you have to wait about five to six seconds for any app to open. But once you get the tablet optimized a little bit, and you get the app actually open and running, it's a pretty smooth experience. YouTube runs great in high quality mode. I can go back, 
I can pick different videos. They load pretty darn quick for little $6 tablets. Multitasking is what kills this tablet. Like if I want to open up the browser right now, good luck. Yeah, see it's thinking about it. So anywho, thanks for watching my little video on how to optimize your El Cheapo tablet. Hopefully this helps you out just a little bit. Let me know in the comments if you have any other tips or tricks for underpowered cheap Android devices and making them a little bit more usable. Thanks for watching. Who really freaking cares? It's a $60 tablet. The box is a box. Oh wait, there's stuff in there that I need.